Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today I wanted to talk about something. I've been meaning to make this video for a while. What video is this? Well, some of you are not going to like it. I think Diablo 4 is an early access game. It hasn't been advertised as an early access game. It hasn't been presented to us in that way. But I can't make any other assumption at this point. The game has shown us its true colors. The game developers have shown us their true colors. And first off, what is an early access game? So if you search for early access game um, on Google, and uh, you will come up with a meaning that basically says something along the lines of, you know, early access games are a pre launch of a game, right? So on Wikipedia, for instance, it says early access, also known as alpha access, alpha founding, or paid alpha, or game preview, is a funding model in the video game industry by which consumers can purchase and play a game in various pre-release development cycles, such as pre-alpha, alpha, and or beta, while the developer is able to use those funds to continue further development of the game. Those that pay to participate typically help to debug the game, provide feedback and suggestions, may have access to special materials in the game, the early access approach is a common way to obtain funding for indie games, and may also be used with other funding mechanisms, including crowdfunding. Many crowdfunding projects promise to offer access to alpha or beta versions of the game as development progresses. However, unlike some of these projects with solicited funds but do not yet have a playable game, all early access games offer an immediately playable version of an unfinished game to players. In what world are we playing a finished game? Honestly. Let's go over the bugs that have happened since launch, and let's talk about these for a second, shall we? Being able to take my Eternal Realm characters and getting access to seasonal items. Um, there is currently a bug, and I'm not sure if it's been fixed yet, but I don't even really care. Um, this bug never should have existed in the first place that literally allowed Eternal Realm characters to get access to seasonal items and could then therefore stack up on things like Wrathful Hearts and Devious Hearts and all that other stuff that they shouldn't have access to. Um, why is this even a thing? Um, and this is going to be a common theme throughout this entire video. The Season Infinite Gold Mechanic Glitch, which has since been patched by the way, but why was this even a thing? Why did this make it into the game? What, 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 in what world did they not vet their own seasonal mechanics that they allowed an infinite gold glitch to make it into the game? Is there any testing whatsoever going on in the background? Barber gem affecting everyone, not just affecting the only the person using it, and also not affecting bleeds, poisons, etc. So basically nerfing the majority of the players in the game, despite the fact that it gives incredibly high amounts of damage to everyone else. Then they fixed the Barber Gem, right? Created more billion damage glitches by adding in the ability for it to work with bleeds, poisons, etc. And there's already a freaking 2 billion bleed damage build that's, uh, <laughs> that's come about because of it. Um, seasonal mechanics actually costing you more gold to enchant your items, not less. Jankity horses that still haven't been fixed. World boss is dead in 5 seconds. Uber Lilith dead in 60 seconds. Quintillion bleed damage barbarian. 2 billion damage shred wolf. Aspects applying damage 3 or more times instead of just once. Most notably is the sorceress one that was applying multiple damage bonuses for every crowd control effect when a boss was staggered. Bugged Hoda aspect, which they recently fixed, that was doing more damage on the edges of the aspect than on the center of the aspect. Bugged Goer's Devastating Grips that had infinite damage in the beginning of the game that had to be patched out and have been patched multiple times since then. Bugged Aspect of the Anemia, Bugged Aspect of the Berserk Ripping, Bugged Uncompletable Dungeons, which have been cropping up constantly. Helltide Cinder's not dropping. Which was eventually fixed, but why did that make it into the game anyway? 142 uber rare unique items dropped from Bug Helltide Chest. Again, why did that even make it into the game? Where is the quality control testing for this game? It feels like there is none. Uh, Magic Find Sigils removed. Still haven't been added back in. Still missing. They're just gone. Players exploiting infinite uses of sigils. Still not fixed. They know it's a bug. They know that there's something wrong with it. They still haven't fixed it. Players are still just 
exploiting the use of finding the perfect sigil. They just find the perfect sigil, and then they just run that sigil over and over and over and over and over again without actually using up the sigil, which is the entire intention of the sigils, and they still haven't fixed it. Um, druids finding barbarian unique items. Now, granted, they did fix this one eventually. It took them some quite some time, but they did eventually fix it. But why was this even in the game in the first place? Every new patch introducing some new game-breaking bug. The most latest patch is the one with the aspect of, uh, or the, uh, the Barber Gem. The Barber Gem now has ridiculous billion damage builds because they both changed it and broke it at the same time. So, yay for more bugged issues. Um, players, uh, let's see here. Uh, every patch, nope, nope, move, move on. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. post death effects not being affected by damage reduction causing unpredictable damage output from these effects. This was something that was recently in the 1.11 patch, and this is probably one of the most insane things that I've heard of yet, and it's probably the thing that pushed me over the edge to make this video in the first place, which is literally that this should have never made it into the game in the first place. And it's probably the cause of a lot of hardcore players' deaths as well. So you hardcore players should get upset about this. Essentially, what this is what this is referring to is that when a monster died, post-death effect, there would often be an explosion or something that would go on. The most notable of these is the death pulse. Uh, let's focus on the death pulse, although there are literally like 10 or 20 more different death post-death explosions. But let's talk about death pulse for a second. Death pulse always goes off after the monster is dead. So let's say you have some damage reduction types. So let's say you have while the damage uh, monster is poisoned damage reduction. Let's say you have while the monster is bleeding. Let's say you have close damage reduction. Let's say you have distant damage reduction. Um, let's say you have um, while the monster is affected by shadow damage damage reduction. Doesn't matter. Any of those types of damage reduction that apply to the monster specifically. Well, when the monster's dead, none of those apply to him anymore. And so what was happening was, is Death Pulse was doing basically full damage with the exception of your non-conditional damage reduction types. So your non-conditional damage redu reduction types were still applying, but none of your conditional effects were applying. So you were taking full damage from any post-damage effect, no matter how much damage reduction you had. You could have 85% damage reduction if you wanted. It didn't matter, because most of that damage reduction was not actually applying to the Death Pulse or any of the other death effects, like the Death Explosions, the Fire Explosion and pulses that come out in three different, you know, lines, um, the mortars that would hit you after you after the monster died, the Frozen effects that would hit you after the monster died, etc., etc., etc. I could go on for hours talking about all the various explosions and ridiculous things that would happen after a monster died, not before the monster died. All of these were having basically most of the damage reduction that you had was not applying to them. So it was making the damage very inconsistent, which means that you could get hit by, for instance, a frozen effect. And the frozen effect wouldn't kill you. And you would be relatively resilient to that frozen effect. And then, after the monster died, if you got hit by a frozen effect, once the monster was dead, that same frozen effect that you could take without issue before would one-shot you. Um, why did this make it into the game in the first place? This is just another example of, I think, we're playing an early access game. Um, can't add new stash tabs because the entire spaghetti code that loads an entire person's stash whenever you see a person in the game world. They literally have told us that it's next to impossible for them to add enough stash tabs into the game for us to purchase because the more stash tabs we have, the laggier the server gets and the more things that it has to load. And it would eventually get untenable to the point where the game would just lock up and crash every single time you encounter a new player because you'd have to load their entire stash and everything that they have. It's not even just their stash. You have to load the entire person's stash, inventory, Equipped items and everything on the ground the person has dropped. It's insane. Um, inventory tension is so bad that 
players who throw everything away are running out of space and feeling the tension. I saw a video uh, the other day by Rax, and he was like, I throw everything away. He goes, you guys don't understand. He goes, I literally walk by most stuff. I don't even pick it up because I think it's garbage. And he said, he said and, and most of the items that I have in my stash are things that I have gone through multiple times and, you know, determined whether or not they're actually, you know, something that I want to keep and thrown away everything that I shouldn't keep. He said, and I'm, I'm already running out of stash space. And he said, at this point, I have to throw away items that are 100% perfect finds that are good for other characters that I would have a hard time replacing, a very hard time replacing, because finding those 100% perfect items is next to impossible. And the inventory tension is so bad in the game that I have to imagine that we are playing an early access title. They, how could they release a game like this where the inventory tension is so bad that literally every single person is running out of stash space? The only way that you're not running out of stash space at this point is if you only ever play one character. If you only ever play one character and that's it, then you might not be running out. Anybody who plays more than one character or even wants to build more than one build on that character is going to start running out of stash space very quickly. We got one whole stash tab recently. A drop in the bucket. Item level being tied to C level is going to be one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in video game history. And honestly, I can't even believe it made it into the game. I don't know who thought that was a good idea, but it is just absolutely dumb. Um, and I can't, I honestly couldn't believe that it took them lo that long to change it so that it wasn't this way, but they didn't actually change it. They just made it so that the caps were 60 and 80 respectively for the sacred and ancestral items, which respectively is still mostly stupid. It's a little bit better than it was before, but it's still mostly just absolutely dumb. This, the character level should not have anything to do with the item level. Why does the character level have anything to do with the item level whatsoever? It doesn't make any sense. Um, Sorcerer having basically zero male gear options. Looks like a man in drag from Rocky Horror Picture Show. This isn't even a joke at this point. Why does one of the characters literally have no options that they can select which make them look the way that they would like to look? I, I mean, that would be like me going into a, a department store and looking for clothes for myself, and they just don't have any male clothes, and I just have to choose some female clothes. Um, I guess I'm wearing a bra and panties today. Um, Druid cosmetics, absolutely terrible. Um, why are the Druid cosmetics so freaking bad? Um, I think most people would literally walk around naked than wear most of the Druid cosmetics. Um, and in fact, if it weren't for the new seasonal stuff that had just recently come out um, that is cross-compatible across all the characters, and this is literally the first decent set of equipment that the Druid has had access to the entire time the game has been out. Um, pretty much all the other equipment looks doofy like this. Like, oh yay, I got some feathers and a... Why do I look so fat? I don't even understand what's going on with this equipment half the time. The druid equipment is just absolutely terrible, and the male sorcerer equipment is even worse. Because although the male sorcerer equipment actually does look cool because it looks like this, right? But every single bit of it looks like it doesn't belong on a man. It just looks like a man wearing female clothes. And hey, you know, if you want to be a man wearing female clothes, more power to you. But if I want to make a male sorcerer, I don't want my smell sorcerer to look like a man wearing female clothes, and that's just me. Um, I could have gone on for a long time more than this, but I really just kind of got to a point when I was making this list where I was like, I don't... I, do I really need to point out every single horrible bug that they've introduced in the game over the past, what is it, uh, two months now? We've been playing this early access game, this this game that is honestly still in beta, and and I feel like there's more that I need to talk about here. Um, first off, where's PTR? All right, I mean I'm gonna put this up on the screen for dramatic effect. Where where is the public test realm? Hey, as of right now. Every single time they introduce a patch, every single time they try to do anything, 
there are horrible game-breaking bugs introduced in every single patch. The public test realm is one of the easiest ways for them to eliminate the bugs before they hit the server. And they don't seem to care that the bugs are hitting the server. They watch these characters uh, exploit this stuff on a regular basis. They have 142 of these super rare, unique items that just floated in, and they were just like, eh, you know what, whatever. We, we, we plugged the hole in the boat quick enough, so, you know, only a little bit of water got in. No public test realm. Um, on top of this, in Diablo 2 Resurrected, they've always posted the patch notes in advance. Why were the patch notes... Only coming on patch day. This is important, and, and I don't understand why this ever was a thing where the patch notes were only coming on patch day. I've never seen a game do this before. I, all of the games previously would post the patch notes in advance of the patch uh, with a public test realm where people could go in and test this stuff out, and they would fix a lot of the major issues and bugs with that patch before it hit the server, before the patch went live, before everything goes up on the server. Before. But here we are in Diablo 4, and every single time, instead of giving us the option or the ability to, uh, you know, test this stuff out in advance, we are constantly, never-endingly just dropped they just drop these patch notes on our heads they drop it into the live server for us to see there doesn't seem to be any quality control testing whatsoever it feels like i i, I was i was saying this jokingly to one of the members of the the kinship and i was like you know i was like i can't wait to see what game breaking bug they're going to introduce next because quite honestly it just seems like every single patch every single patch they just introduce another game breaking bug because there's no quality control testing there's no process by which they are making sure that the game is being developed and tested properly. And also, the players, the people who would actually f test the game for you for free, we don't have the ability to do so. Instead, you just drop the patches on live, we find the bugs on live, they get exploited on live, and, you know, who cares, I guess, right? Because... They obviously don't seem to care that any of these bugs are taking place. It, it really just feels like we are playing an early access game. Uh, the game is still in beta. It never should have been released, to be honest with you. Um, a year from now, given proper quality control testing, given proper um, you know time to mature as a title, I feel like Diablo 4 would be an absolutely amazing game. A year from now, two years from now. Um, this, but what we have right now is a game where even the developers don't seem to know what they're doing. They keep releasing things, they keep making changes, but it doesn't even really feel like they understand exactly what it is that they're doing. They're just reacting at this point. At this point, we have a house that's on fire. And they're just reacting to try and put the fire out as quickly as they can. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is just because I'm getting fed up myself. The sheer number of bugs that have been introduced in this game is massive. I have played a lot of games over my time, and I have never seen a company that was willing to just simply patch in game-breaking bugs without any kind of quality control testing whatsoever. I find myself often, on a regular basis, asking myself, how did this make it into the game in the first place? How did this pass quality control? How did they get to this point where this bug could have ever made it into the game in the first place? Um, I need to give you an example I feel like this is probably the easiest one to give you, and this has to do with Season 1 of Diablo 4. They told us in advance that Season 1 of Diablo 4 was made before the game ever launched, okay? 
The game launched on June 1st, which was my birthday, and um, June 1st was quite some time ago. They were able to do quality control testing on the Season 1 patch for months in advance. The Season 1 patch finally came and was released onto the Diablo 4 servers live with tons of game-breaking bugs. The Barber Gem was completely bugged and just did billions of damage. The <laughs> the seasonal mechanic, which is this is one that really blows my mind, the seasonal mechanic providing infinite gold and also um, costing you more when you enchant items, both of those bugs should have never made it into the game. It's a freaking seasonal mechanic. The seasonal mechanics are, should be vetted in advance by a quality control testing team. This is like bare minimum. If you were going to introduce a new mechanic like this, a seasonal mechanic, then the quality control team goes through the process of testing this stuff out, which apparently they didn't do because both, <laughs> both a bug that hurt the players and a bug that was exploitable to gain infinite amounts of gold both made it into the game with absolutely, apparently, no testing whatsoever. Uh, and it's up to the player base at this point to test the game. I look forward to a year from now, maybe two years from now, when this game has matured into a better title, a, a much more finished product. But as it is right now, i got to label this game for exactly what it is. It's an early access title. We are playing an early access game. We are participating in the beta of a product. Um, we are helping to form the game, essentially, um, in the early years of its service. And maybe one day we will get a finished product that actually resembles, you know, what we should have gotten when the game launched. And I wouldn't be necessarily so upset about this if it wasn't for the fact that it wasn't advertised as an early access product. Uh, you know, when you when you buy into an early access product, I feel like the moral of the story is you know what you're getting into. You know it's an unfinished product. You know there's going to be bugs. You know things are going to change dramatically over the days and years when the game is out. But that's not the case with Diablo 4. We were sold the idea that this was a finished product and that we would be seeing seasonal content introduced, that we would be eventually seeing some expansions coming down the road, but we were not sold the idea that this was a completely unfinished product that we were going to have to help develop. And I'm not entirely against the idea of helping developing this product, but I really wish we had known in advance what we were getting into. Um, and looking back on the past two months of playing Diablo 4, you know, nearly constantly for two months, uh, I can't help but say that it's just an unfinished product is what it is. It's a very unfinished product that we are going to have to keep an eye on as it develops and as the <laughs> as it leaves its beta test uh, it's alpha test uh, as they finally put the game, the game together in the way that they want. Uh, I, I almost get the feeling that they are using us, the, the players, to figure out how they want to make the game. Uh, somewhere along the line, they decided that they were just going to use the player base to form how the game would develop. So as we play the game, they're making the changes based on how we play. And they've said this multiple times during multiple uh, campfires, that they have all this data and they know which aspects we're not using and they know which weapons we're not using and they know which dungeons we're not going to and they know you, which nightmare sigils we're not do using and they know which ones we're using more than others and, and they know which characters are being played more and they know which, which builds are being played more and which skills are being utilized and which ones are being underutilized and so forth and so on. And uh, somewhere along the line, it just kind of hit me that they don't really know what they're doing. They're just watching us and they're reacting to the way that we are playing the game. 
Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when it's just me ranting for 24 minutes about Diablo 4 being an early access title, uh, which I strongly believe. But I'd like to hear what you guys have to think about this. Uh, do you think that Diablo 4 is an early access title? Do you think it has more bugs than any full release game is rightly allowed to have? Um, let me know your thoughts. As always, keep watching.